Okay. In the spirit of the PhD, uh, I don't know if you have to wait later. Uh, <laughs> Talk okay. okay. Quick. So quickly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I posted on Facebook also last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! This is not one of these Facebook things from last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is important because these things can happen. Okay. Come on. Okay. Uh, so basically, what happened is like uh, the ball goes behind the wicket keeper. Mm -hmm. The batsman is not trying to take the run. Okay. Okay. He is trying to just shake it off. Basically. I remember that now. <laughs> okay. okay. So the batsman is just trying to shake it off. He walks through the crease. I mean, and then he's coming by coming back. He's kind of uh, out of the crease. Mm -hmm. And the wicketkeeper is just holding the ball, maybe mm -hmm. like for ten seconds. Is the ball there at that time? Ball is there. He's holding for ten seconds. He's not making any attempt. By definition, when the keeper passes the ball to another fielder, the ball is dead at that point. But if he's holding it for a little, if what you're saying is accurate, and he held it for 10 seconds, and nobody's trying to run anywhere. Mm -hmm. would because the it. other team kind of up, uh, appealed for it, right. and the main empire didn't give the decision, but the leg empire had to give the decision. So, yeah. From the value side, I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. Let's move on. I, I think that I remember your post, and I agreed with you at the time. I didn't realize it was you, but yeah, I agreed with you. Okay. Stick with the decision and enforce it. Once you've deliberated long enough that you're sure you're making the right decision, then that's the decision. Okay? Even though this guy's, when he speaks, fire comes out of his mouth, don't let him intimidate you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's the president and everything, in addition to being captain, you're still the umpire. So, and understand what I'm saying here, though. This has to go hand in hand with this. So you can't make kind of a wish-washy decision and then try to enforce it and say I'm right. You have to deliberate to the extent that you're sure you're making the right decision and then make sure that it's enforced, okay? At least two occasions of the years ago, I'm enjoying Sunday afternoon with my family and somebody's calling me asking me, well, See, what happened is that he was, the ball pitched outside like, dude, please. <laughs> if you're having to call somebody to have your decisions validated, why are you there? <clears throat> Again, you're not going to get every call right. I love Steve Buckner, fellow Jamaican and all. He got some huge calls wrong in his career. Oh, we remember. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's still not allowed to go to India. But... Mistake or not, you're still the official. We you still don't, love him. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you do because he's retired now. <laughs> but regardless of whether the call is right, and you can talk about it with the captain afterwards if they're mad as, as heck at you, you can talk about it afterwards, but at the time that you make the decision, that's your decision. Your captain is not going to go off the field and hold it. I'm going to do a call for Brian. None of that. By the way, the captains, and we talked about it yesterday, take the rule book with you. If there is a legitimate, just shocker of a decision, you can, it's perfectly legitimate for you to say, I think that's completely wrong. If you don't mind, I'm going to get the rule book and show you where that's wrong. That's a different conversation. Okay? <clears throat> I'm not going to spend a whole heck of a lot of time on this, but this is what I want for you to understand. Any action being outside the spirit of cricket, umpire will do the following. Any of these, depending on the situation. Simply, simple word to the guy. Like I did with, with your guy, right? Speak to his captain. If he does it again, let me stop at the first dead ball, call the captain over. I don't like that type of appeal, I'm not gonna have it. Make sure that he understands that, right? Give him an official warning. If that happens again, I have my trusted notepad here, what's your name? I just wrote his name down. That's an official warning. And then if for some reason he's still going to whatever it was that he's doing to tick you off, it goes through the proper channels at that point. Okay? Am I in your way, by the way? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay. Okay. Any questions before we move on to power play? Brian, are you ever allowed to eject a player from the field? <laughs> 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 Um, eject. 
Aside from the clothing issue that we talked about earlier, uh, it really is very subjective. If I saw a player, like a bowler for example, in fact I did see this happen in Houston, uh, took the bat, he was batting, and he didn't like something that the bowler said, and he literally took the bat and hit the bowler. If something like that happens in an umpiring, I'm probably going to tell him you can't play anymore, get off the field. And risk being getting what if he hits with that bat again? <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, the proper channels, put it, it's past the disciplinary committee at that point. <laughs> right. Probably. It's called the police. Yeah, yeah. that's a, in all seriousness. Yeah. If somebody's going to that level of violence, you, nothing you can do or say is going to stop anything. So, yeah, at that point, you're calling the police. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have a disciplinary committee set up, right? How, how would you tackle a situation where players from one team are arguing with each other? <laughs> Pull up a chair. <laughs> no. Um, the feeling side? Oh, yeah. Feeling or know. batting side? Just the batting side. I mean, the two batsmen arguing <laughs> or are they available? Mostly feeling side. Let's feeling side. Feeling side, I just step in and say, none of that needs to happen, get the game going. I mean, I can't imagine this. Well, actually, I can. Yeah, <laughs> I, have been, I have been into situations right. a couple of years when I was umpiring, and mm -hmm. probably abuse was coming from fielding side from for <coughs> each other rather than you know abusing the batsman. So at that point, I'd say this game needs to be finished in the time frame that we agreed upon, and every argument that you're having is slowing that process down. You need to stop it. And let's get the game going. Power play, 35 over match, first 8 overs, mandatory fielding restrictions. How many allowed outside the circle? Two. Two. Did anybody disagree? Did anybody not know that? Okay. Following that initial power play, and those of you who heard me talk about this last year, you'll see that this is different now, consistent with the ICC changes. We no longer have a batting and a bowling power play after that. What we instead have is a batting power play of three overs, okay? Has to be taken before the 28th over. If it, the batting side has not decided to take it by the end of the 27th, you let them know at the beginning of the 28th. This is not your power play, okay? That, that's for 35, for 30. I'm sorry, yes, for 35. I'll deal with the 30 afterwards, but yes, this is 35, okay? Three players allowed outside the circle during the batting power play. Okay? If you have 11. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so so basically, the way they counted it, how many you have to have inside? Yeah. Yes. 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 For a 30 over match, for a seven fielder restrictions, two allowed outside, batting power play, three overs that needs to be taken before the 24th. Okay? Three players allowed outside during the batting power play. For all other overs, this is the big change. For all other overs, not including the batting and the mandatory, there needs to be a minimum of five inside the circle. Okay? Before it used to be four, it's now five. So we've eliminated the bowling power play, and we've replaced it with, I say we, the ICC, and we're following their lead has eliminated the bowling power play and instead of going to five inside the circle. If you're not paying attention, that's a real easy one to miss when you're umpiring this year, okay? Especially enforcing the batting power play, because you can't take batting power play at the end of the innings. You have to take it for... Yeah. Uh, if I didn't say it earlier, umpiring a game is a much bigger mental challenge than you might think. Because you constantly have to be thinking about every single thing that is going on in that game. Both in terms of the exact issue that you happen to be, okay, is he stepping on the line, is he over the line? But you also have to be thinking, where in the game are you? Have they taken the power play? All of the different issues, how many are inside the circle? All of these things need to be covered by using umpire. So you cannot allow yourself mentally to fall asleep, okay? Please use the square leg umpire. Those of you who know me, when I'm playing and my team is batting, I basically just umpire 
until it's time for me to bat. And then when I get out two or three balls later, I'm back out umpiring again. Because I think the square leg umpire is a much more important person than we're giving him credit for, and, and we're not treating it like, we're not giving it the amount of respect that it deserves. Okay? I'll talk explicitly about square leg much later. But among the duties that I would tell a square leg umpire, if I'm the main umpire, and square leg is coming in, I'm walking over to him and saying a few things, that's one of the first things I'm telling him. Make sure you count the number inside the circle, at least to five at minimum. Okay? If there are not enough players inside the circle, and I underline at the point that the bowler delivers the ball, square leg umpire calls and signals no ball. At the point that the player that the bowler delivers the ball. I had somebody try to argue with me last year saying it was at the time that the bowler started his run-up, which is nonsense. Right? At the point where the ball is delivered, if they're not the minimum required inside the circle, that's a no ball. Power play, 